All right, so going back to that notion that uh, you know, when I first started with the whole riding at the track, it didn't cross my mind at all racing. It's like, I don't know if I can do that, right? And I did what, like two years of riding at the track until last year, when was it, in October, we had a Jason and a Steve and Dean, uh, who are racers, come by and tell us what racing is all about, right? Debunking some myths and stuff like that. I was like, hmm, okay, well, yeah, I still don't see myself doing that, but it's not as, yeah. like, out there. It's like, I may get into that endurance thing. That sounds more like something I would enjoy yeah, myself, right? Yeah. I just kept that at the back of my mind, right? And that's uh, <clears throat> getting to this point, right? I, I was asking myself, is it for me, racing? I mean, am I ready for that? What, what kind of skill level do you need to have to be able to do that, right? It's like in my head, okay, do you have to be a master at exiting corners really hard? Do you have to be a master at like trail breaking as deep as you can into corners, right? Do you have to like have bar cases, body position? What is it, right? Those were things like running in my head. But there are people who are just, you know, they barely get a sport bike and they want to go race, right? That's their nature. It's all good. For me, after that, that meetup we had here, and of course the video for that is available and people have been watching that quite a bit. Uh, it got me ideas, like, okay, that might be something that I, I could actually do. I may be able to do that at this point. So I had a little change of mind for a number of reasons. One was a little bike upgrade, because I was riding my Honda CBR 600 F4i 2001, pretty much stock, right? My bike, I mean, oh, I don't have the, the photo here. I think I had some place else which I rode pretty much stock. And people would say, man, even the suspension, with that stock suspension, how can you get any fast on that thing, right? Eventually, I mean, it's gonna become unsafe because the bike, the geometry and everything is not set for you to go over a certain speed or try to like maximize what comes out of that bike. I don't know, man, I just don't feel I'm that fast. I don't feel like scary on the track at to a point where I'm like losing control. It, it seems to work just fine, man. As far as what I'm doing here, it works just fine. But when it got to a point where like, okay, if I do crash this bike, it's gonna be very expensive to get it back together because it's a very old bike, right? As I started like, for instance, I, I looked into putting uh, rear sets, right? To get them a little higher. I couldn't find them. Exactly. The only thing I could find find was the, the Chinese knockoffs. And then everybody yeah. said, don't even think about it if you, you know, care for your life. So I'm like, well, if I cannot find rear sets, what else can't I find for that bike if I ever need to? I'm like, no, I'm going to keep that bike as stock as I can. It's still shiny. Everybody at the track would always say, wow, that's the cleanest FRI I have ever seen. Right? Because it still has like, what, 14,000 miles on it, right? Stuff like that. So I'm like, I, I want to keep it that way, but I'm going to do a little upgrade. I'm going to get a bike that has good suspension to begin with, and it's a track bike, right? It doesn't have all the, the stuff that a street bike has. Also, my change of mind on getting a bike like that uh, came from Chris, right? When uh, Chris was coaching me a couple of months ago at MSRH, he said something along the lines of, dude, you're doing everything right, right? Throttle control, braking, you're in control of the bike. You're doing all the, the core things right. But I can see that you've reached a plateau on that bike. I can see that you're struggling to make it turn. It's because of the stock suspension. The suspension is not helping. You're fighting the bike to make it turn into those, uh, that back section of MSRH, where the bus stop and the keyhole, mm -hmm. where you have fast change of directions. I was struggling with it, and because I didn't know any better, I never rode like a better bike up until then, I was like, I don't know, I just think it's this hard, I, I don't know, maybe I'm doing something wrong, I'm not doing the counter steering part wrong, uh, you know, right, I'm not doing the body <coughs> shift, you know, it's me, it's not the bike, the bike clearly has been built by people who know what the hell they're doing, I don't know what I'm doing, right, but once I heard from somebody who actually knows the stuff, Right? I heard it from Chris, who I've learned to trust. 
right? Okay, maybe I should look into it, right? And then I get the bike, I go out to um, MSR8 for the first time, I do half a track day, I'm already turning the same lap times I was doing with my FRI. What kind of bike did you get? Uh, Daytona Triumph 675, 675. Okay. right? Okay. And to me that was surprising because I thought, well, I'm going to just ride uh, half a day. <coughs> it would take me those like four sessions just yeah. to get used to the bike and to the GP shift because I had been riding standard shift for 25 years. I get on GP shift, every gear shift I have to think up or down, up or down, up or down, <laughs> every yeah, single boy. shift, right? Which for 25 years I didn't have to think about it anymore. You just go. Yeah. Then I see myself on a track, on a bike that I don't know, right? And like, up or down, up or down. Oh crap, it was the other way, now I'm going wide on the corner. That's what happened. But then I look at the, the logs at the end of the day, it's like, I was going just as fast as I, as I was doing with my FRI. That sounds promising, right? So stuff like that, uh, you know, uh, became a, a big thing for me. And then the other thing that happened uh, ever since was to start developing the website and that's why we said we should book up because I started for the last two years I've been telling these guys look you have to have a structure you have to uh, you know keep log of you know how much you're spending uh, riding at the track because if you want to do more of that you have to know how much you're spending so mm -hmm. that you can budget and then figure out what can I do because I want to ride Barber I want to go to California and do Laguna Seca but how can I do that if I don't know how much that's going to cost, right? So started putting all that stuff together. Took also the, the step of, you know, taking the track day plans, which is another thing that I've been talking about here. You go out to the track, you just don't go out to the track. You figure out, what am I going to be working on? Am I going to be working on trail braking? And am, am I going to be working on the line because I don't know that track? I have not been there, right? Uh, what are the goals? What do you expect to accomplish when you go out there, right? What is your plan of action? You have that goal, but how are you going to achieve it, right? So I've been doing that on pen and paper for the last two years. Eventually I figure, yeah. you know what? I'm a big computer guy. I'm going to actually stick that all into a system because that's what I do for a living, right? Started building that out. So I did the, the track date plan the debrief, so as we come out of the track back home and we have all of our notes, all of our logs from tire pressure and all that stuff, we have all the sessions, the goals that we've worked on, right? I was logging that myself before, I just started building a system for that. Um, the debrief, putting like what kind of uh, tire pressures I was running, the kind of uh, temperature that I was getting, putting on the tires, what kind of tires and stuff like that starting to log all that stuff. But I've been building this from the standpoint of a track day writer, not from a racer's perspective, because those are different types of needs, right? Because <clears throat> like a, a set of tires for me, like my last uh, Super Courses SP2, they lasted, I think, eight to 10 track days, something like that, right? For a racer, I know that that's not feasible. It's not going <laughs> to last that long, right? It's going to yeah. last one day, sometimes like one or two races because then you have to toss it, you know, and put new fresh rubber for the next race, right? So it changes. So that's why the main reason why I got into racing is for that, to learn that experience to say, okay, beyond this track riding things that I know about, what else do I need to know about as far as like, tracking costs, building the track day plans, working with the debrief from a racer's perspective, how does that go? Because when I do a debrief, I'm thinking from a track rider standpoint, which is, okay, for this track day, I said I was gonna work on um, you know, raising my corner speed through turn two and turn 16 at Coda. This is how I plan on accomplishing it. When I go back home, I'm like, okay, this is how it felt, right, I write it down, I look at the videos, I see if that messed up with my line, if that messed up with you know whatever else, if I have like my rear facing camera, I can see what kind of speed I was you know pulling on the guy behind me, or if the guy behind me was actually like going on the throttle because I'm going too slow. I can see those things and then think what can I do the next time out from the standpoint of somebody who just likes riding and wanna get better at it. 
from a racer standpoint, what does that look like? I don't know. That's why I'm getting into racing, right? It's like, what would a track day plan or a, a race day plan look like for a racer? A guy who's trying to make money out of it. Maybe he is already making money out of it. So his plans and his goals are going to be different, right? And then I don't plan on making this like a professional tool for racers because it's not like something that the MotoGP guys will be using. They already have a system for that. I'm thinking more like the two of us here who just yeah. got started into racing. How does it vary for us? Because we have our daily jobs, right? We don't make money out of it. How can we optimize what we do so that we can actually go race? We can actually go do track days. We can still stay safe. We can learn, right? Have fun. What can we do, right? That's the idea. Because, you know, if somebody sees like, okay, but Claudio back in October, he said he didn't want to go race, racing at all. Now he's all yeah. into it. What happened? This is what happened. I'm trying to, to gain experience from that. Um, so what did I do? I started working on my race license based on what we've learned from Jason and the guys <coughs> last year. I did the, the license class on a Friday morning, right? We actually did together mm -hmm. that stuff, right? On a, you know, half a day, we're just sitting in class learning about the main racing rules and all that stuff. In the afternoon, did the practice sessions, which is just like a regular track day. You just go around the track and you make sure you don't crash. The uh, coaches or teachers or whatever we call the guy who trains us, like Danny, what is it? Danny Dominguez. is a coach or a professor. Yeah, instructor, I guess. Instructor, yeah. right? So they're going to go around and make sure that you're not doing stupid stuff out there on the track. That's what they want to see. And he, of course, you can't crash. Right? And then at the end of the day, you do the, the mock race, right? just so that you go through the procedure of you know, lining up to, to the grid and then you know, when do you start and blah, blah, all that stuff. So I did that on a Friday. I decided to do Saturday and Sunday corner work because you're supposed to do two of them for the provisional license requirements. Um, I actually regret it. I wanted to actually have raced on Sunday. I think Sunday was the... That's the no what uh, Saturday. Is Sunday that? was a miserable day, right? Yeah. Saturday. What corner is that? Keyhole on the outside. Oh really? Oh okay. Yeah. Okay. Because that was one of the things that as I was sitting there and watching, that was the first time that I did yeah. corner work. I'm looking at it and I'm like, huh, I could be there. Actually, huh. Yeah. I think I'm faster than that person who's racing right now. Why yeah. have I been thinking I I was, you know, I couldn't make it. Looking from that angle, it changed my perspective quite a bit. It's like, wow, wow, there are some guys that are going really slow back there. And then I saw some scary things. Because when you have the waves and you have experts and uh, novice, the experts will lap you depending on, you know, on your pace. And I did see some scary passes there of experts on novices that were like, Holy mother, I hope that doesn't ha happen to me. Well, it did, mm. but, mm. right? But f looking from the outside, it's like, okay, that's scary. I wouldn't want to be in that person's shoes it's right now. Stay on your line. <clears throat> well, even if you do, you that is not enough. You, yeah, you, still still your line. Line. Stay you know, up, yes, yeah. right? You think if you stay <laughs> it's in your line. It's expert to pass you. So if you think. Better than that. Yeah, if you think. Yeah, they don't know. That just yeah. staying on the line and wearing the yellow shirt will keep you out of trouble. That's what they say. That was not at least my experience. And I'll <laughs> share that maybe next month where an expert like tried to lap me. He thought hey, it was he hit me from behind and I mean it could have ended pretty bad. Right? And I was just I was on the line. Some of the experts they actually I mean I was coming out of the corner, drifting where I have to go. Right? That's the proper line. You have to drift away. One or two guys, they passed me on the inside as I was driving out. The other guy tried to pass me on the outside where I was going. And he was not fast enough at that point to just make it before I got there. That could have been pretty bad. Right? So things to watch out for. And I saw that when I was caught at work. It's like, okay, I see the, the slower guys at the back of the pack. They're safe and sound. But once the experts come, they are fighting for a position. Right, they are out for blood. And that's the thing that I don't like myself being into. Like, um, I did six races that weekend. All of them, on the start, I was like, 
Ooh, let those guys go. Look, turn one. I don't want to be in that mess. <laughs> that was me. It's like, you guys go. I'm going to sit here, you know, old grandpa, and just go around the corner just fine. I'm going to do my thing because that was one of the requirements. You cannot crash, right? You have to complete the weekend without crashing. At least two races. If you do five races and you crash on the sixth one, they cancel out that uh, weekend and you have to do it, you know, do one Start. more. Like, oh, darn it, I don't want to do that. So I'm like, I just want to complete the races. So race start, bah, psh, lights go. All right, sit around. I count like one, two, and go. And then I just watch. Ah, <laughs> right? And then I just tiptoe around them. And, you know. Yeah, it's like, it's in my head. That's how my, my mind works, right? So I did that. I got the corner working aspect out of the way that weekend. And then last month we were together at uh, NOLA. Uh, at one point I thought, man, big mistake. I had never ridden at NOLA. <laughs> it's a track I don't know. At MSRH, I've done uh, what, yeah. like 18 track days there. I know it relatively well. NOLA, no idea. Watched all the videos and all stuff. Learned the line from the video, or learned the track from the video, but the video does not show the bumps. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And then I get there, I, I hear the locals saying, yeah, a lot of people, they come from the outside and they go right to the, the track and they complain because it's bumpy, and it is. So, you know, whenever you get a chance, you know, we can tow you around, but they're there practicing, right, for their races. They don't have much time to just, you know, yeah. tow you around. So I didn't get much of that. And negotiating those bumps, I was scared. To me, it was bumps. You didn't write ECR, right? No, I never did. It was almost as bad as ECR. I mean, whoever wrote... Eagles no. Canyon before they started replaying. Really just those three turns, but yeah. It's, but when it's you bumpy. depending on how you hit it, <laughs> yeah. right? It's like it yeah. unsettles yeah. really bad. Yeah. You know, really bad. I mean, on the riders meeting in the morning, every morning they said turn one has become a, a, a single line corner. Yeah. I mean, there are not like many lines around that corner. There's only one, which is not the one that you would think. You have to go deeper and then late entry and miss the apex by a little bit because if you go straight into the apex there is a, a badass bump there right that mm. it's scary and, and i mean it's a fast straight right and then you make that yeah that's a big long straight going into that one right so you don't want to like hit a bump like straight on and i'm like i don't want to deal with that i'm gonna just do my thing around the track you know i i just don't care because again now you guys know my thing, I'm not there to compete, I'm there to learn. Different mindset there. Right, so anyways, did all that, uh, that stuff, that was fun, that was fun. By the way, I got a chance to see um, Ty Howard come out of retirement and race that weekend. That was something else. Because I saw, okay, novice riders, all right, I think that I'm faster than some of those. I'm pretty much about the same level as those guys. Oh, those are definitely faster than me. Not that much faster, I can actually relate to what they are doing. Cool. And then you see the experts. Like, whoa, that's already another level. You just see like the way, you know, their lines around the corners and just, you know, how smooth and fast they are. Cool. And then you see Ty Howard go by. Holy cow. That was a whole different ball game. Like coming around here, the keyhole, he, the, I mean, the dude was on rails, right? Whoosh like pulling a gap of like 20, 25 seconds to the second place, it was something else. Like this guy is not competing. I mean, he's just having fun <laughs> out there. That's pretty cool, right? So that was interesting. And that's, uh, uh, you had mentioned several times, right? If you haven't uh, done any corner work before, do it. Because seeing it from, a, from that angle, it opens up things. It's like a whole new perspective. Yeah, yeah, right? It's different than, you know, being there making those corners when you're watching it's like, oh, how they do it. Yeah. It's, it's like I didn't even I can't I barely even recognize this yes, corner. Like and I've been through it? both directions. Right? <laughs> like, Keyhole from the outside. It? Yeah, I don't yeah. even remember having a, a corner work what's a station on this side because I always see that. Because that's where we're looking, right? I mean yeah, when you yeah, go yeah, around you see this one keyboard. and you're looking out yeah. here, not out here. Yeah. Right? So that that was really good. I really enjoyed that experience. 
the whole how the races went, uh, probably next week or next week, next month, I will go more into the details of my preparation for the stuff, the things that set me back, uh, things that drove me nuts. Like in the morning on Friday, I had to to miss two sessions because of you know the the tech requirements for some things that I needed to do, and then number plates and. Pfft. Yeah, there was a lot of things that could get me out of my element because I thought, I mean, you guys know that I over-prepare for everything. And then I get there, I realize that there were still things yeah. that are missing. There is no over-preparing. Yeah, there is no over-preparing. You never know what you're going to encounter. And I'm like, well, okay, but I, I feel like I need to share that. So I'll share that with uh, you guys next month, hopefully. Uh, and again, for my you know removal of my provisional Thing from the license and why do I want to remove the provisional requirements it's because if I don't do that by the end of this year then next year I have to start all over I have to take class do the mock race do the corner work do all the, the races without crashing and all that stuff and I don't want to go through all that so I just want to do one more race weekend this year which I plan on doing in June have you posted up this video of Noah uh, I yes one yes I gotta check that out I think I posted maybe two weeks ago. The other ones, not yet, because I'm still... Hey, hey man, hey, welcome. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm like, <laughs> it's all good, things are coming. Yeah. So yeah, I haven't shared the other ones because I still have to get over that, uh, oh man, I'm so ashamed because that's not a race. I, I cannot publish that as a <laughs> race video, it's not. It's just not. The only one that looked somewhat like a race, it, it was this one it's that a track I published. Walk. It's a track walk. Or actually, no, I'm sorry. I didn't publish this one. Not this race in specific. It was another one that what I published. The, 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 the one Proud that we did. One? It was the Proud Not one. Because that's the only one that I was actually like racing somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> a guy on the 300. <laughs> no, on the 250. <laughs> it wasn't a 250. No kidding. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember the Armco on the right side on pit lane there. I'm like, where are you? The front straight's over to the right there? Yeah, it, no, it's it on is. the straight. Yeah, really? Straight. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I don't that's that's remember it being straight. that narrow, but yeah. it's, it's been a while. It's three bikes, that's all you get. On that's really? Well, I mean, well, I was mean, yeah, 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 sure and our speed was so slow that... Oh, that changes the... Uh, right. I mean, so I what was your best lap? 210. 210, really? Okay, yeah. you weren't that much. Longer. I did, so, again, it's the way I work. It's funny. First five, five races, I was just sitting at the back. Like I said, I'm gonna, the lights go off, I count two, and then I go. Let the other guys kill themselves at turn <laughs> one, and then I keep going. I don't, I, I cannot crash. That's my goal for the day. On my track day plan, that's what I had. Do not crash. That was the only goal I had there. Uh, but then on the last race, I'm like, okay, on this one, I'm going to let loose just a little bit more. I'm going to just try not to get lapped on this one. And then on that one, I turned like 210. On the other ones, I was doing like 214 mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. then on the very last one, I did 210. Right? But cool. Yeah. So you're talking about four seconds, like it's like this gigantic like thing, years. like 10 yeah. years. And I'm like, man, for 1,000, 2,000, I was like, okay, yeah, how many turns? Was right. Like four seconds, yeah. I was like, so that's crazy right. to me. Yeah, so like, <clears throat> I mean, you did what, two, six, two, five? six seven two, was my best. So that's not bad, right? Yeah, for first weekend there. That was first weekend, that was that's good. the thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was my thing, just negotiating. <clears throat> I mean, every lap around the track, I was concerned about the bumps. Because every time I would try it slightly different, and then I would slow down a spot, and then somebody would come like on the inside, on the outside. So you're <laughs> busy about not getting into other yeah. people's way, but you're also busy about thinking, okay, I need to remember what line I tried and whether it worked or not. Because some really didn't work. Yeah. Because I hit them like straight on. And it's one of those, if you hit them straight on, but you're opening on the gas, you go through them fine. Now if you're like, oh, there's a bump, and then you mm. shift way to the front, that's where you feel it. Mm. And then every time I had to think about it, eventually there was some that's like, okay, on this one, I gotcha. I'm gonna get back on the throttle because you're not gonna hurt me. And that was the thing. You would like flow through them because sometimes I would like, it's like, I remember there is a bad bump there. I'm preparing for you. And then an expert or a local would come by. Yeah, <laughs> trying to get a baseline for your lap. Exactly. It's, that's a lot of corners to learn in a very short period of time. Yeah, it is. So, yeah, but I'll make the other videos available. I mean, it's really very uninteresting, most of the videos. 
Some of them are really interesting when the experts start lapping me, because then you see the guys going like really fast and really close, like uh, I know uh, Jason mentioned and shared on the Beyond the Track meeting in October. I mean, that was the closest I ever gotten past. That was like crazy close. You got hit? Yes. I, I was mentioning to the guys, it got hit, you know, one of the experts, you think, you know, the guy sees the yellow jersey and cuts you a slack, some slack. No, not that one guy, right? Most of it though, the other passes, it didn't start on me at all, even though it was close and mm -hmm. fast and everything. It's predictable though. Yeah, it was like, as long as you keep doing your thing, you're, you are not like moving like crazy on the track, they will find a way around you, right? Uh, and the guy on the 250 who I raced with, right? Which I was pretty much passing him on the straights <laughs> and he would get me on every single corner. So at some point, what I was trying to do is like, okay, I know he's gonna catch me on the corners. Let me just see how far I can go before he catches me. That was like my thing. And eventually I got to a point, it's like, okay, let's uh, lap around, here is where he was catching me. Now it's taking him a couple more corners. So it means that it seems like I'm going a little bit faster, you know, every lap. But that was about it. I, I wouldn't even venture trying to. And this guy, later I sent him the video and everything and he said, yeah, don't feel bad, dude. I mean, uh, I'm a local here. That's my home track. I know it really well. I said, okay, that explains it. He said, you know, just whenever you come by, I'll show you, you know, if you do like a, a track day or something, I'll show you where the bumps are because you need to know that. Uh, the similar like guys, they said if, uh, yeah. if, if it stays like getting, if it keeps getting bad like that, they're not going to race again next year. Oh, really? Because it's like getting like borderline dangerous for racing. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't know if you heard that when they said on the riders meeting on Sunday, they said that. No, I heard them say that they, they wanted everybody to go past the bumps and, and go deeper in turn one, but I didn't hear them say that they, would, they were thinking about not coming back. Yeah, they said if mm -hmm. it keeps, because they said that from this year, or from last year to this year, they said it changed a lot. They said it got a yeah, lot worse. Yeah, the cars pushed the, yeah. in the summer. They kind of, when they go around the turns at speed, they're pushing all the asphalt, and that's what's making the bumps. So there's two bumps right there on turn one. If you don't go past them, then you're going to hit them both going through the apex. Yeah, uh, and that's and then the, it's one of those like at uh, Coda yesterday. I probably did the most passing I've have ever done because I'm usually like I don't care about like catching people on corners and stuff. I just wait for the straight and then I go by if I'm that much faster. Otherwise, I'm like I'll sit behind and do the thing. All good. Yesterday I felt like, no, I think I have the good speed, good control, and this is Coda. I can afford multiple lines around mm -hmm. the corner. In awesome. MSRH, doing the track walk with Chris. <laughs> There's not a lot of runoff. <laughs> no, no, and not just the, the lot of runoff. There's like one line around yeah. some of those things. And oh, then you yeah. see those like big yeah. dips and stuff, like uh, on, a, what is it, Joe Bone into the carousel going the other way, mm -hmm. or a Diamond's Edge, and then you see like the difference yeah. in the camber changes, yeah. it's like... It's like your tire needs to be right there, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't wanna take any chances so, there. You know, like you know should track. a rider wait so yeah, long to go racing go. like I did? For me, yes. Like, anybody who thinks or acts like me, yes, right? It took me that long, like from my first track day, looking like that on the bike, like this, and then getting a little better later, to this, riding my little, you know, stock bike and stuff. It took like 35 track days to go from this to this. So it took me a long time to say, I think now I'm ready to do that race thing. But I heard from other riders that for them, maybe not. When we did the class there, there was one lady who had never ridden at the track. Yeah. She was taking the race license. She was racing on uh, Sunday. Wow. Uh, she well, was out there racing. Time. She went down in practice. Too. She went down in practice, <laughs> but she was there. Yeah. And at no point do they tell you this is the minimum lap time for no. a race. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And they need racers. They're trying to recruit. Yeah, racers. they yeah. need money and mm -hmm. registration. <laughs> right, so it really depends on you know what, what you're aiming for. Right, so it really, for me, it worked well this way, right, because had I not waited that long, when I was out at NOLA, getting passed by the experts like that, you would have scared the crap out of me and I would not go back there. 
because yeah. I would not be ready for that. But after writing a couple of sessions in level three here with uh, you know the local organizations there, okay, I got used to you know being passed on the inside, on the outside. All right, that's not so bad. I just I know it's going to be a little closer. All right, or a lot yeah. closer. Mm. Okay, I can deal with that. But if I put yeah. myself in that situation back there, dude, it's like I mean on my first track day, just hearing the other bikes fly by me, it was like whoa, wait, whoa. You don't want to have that at the track, right? So it really depends, and that was the point that I wanted to, one of the points I wanted to, to get across here. Uh, but now, oh. let's hear from a different perspective, mm -hmm. right? Because as I was there on the track, there was this guy, oh, this guy here, was another blue bike, this guy here, right? Then eventually, remember I said, like here, I was like, what, one row or two rows ahead of Brian? Yeah, Ryan? yeah, two, I think. And then lights go off, I count one, two and then i go so when brian went by <laughs> me sure. and i'm like okay now behind me i only have two 250 bikes let me go and i'm thinking two 250 guys i'm not gonna be dead last on this race they were catching me by like yeah. third three or four yeah. it's like oh, <laughs> that's ridiculous but whatever <laughs> so are you guys not driving in far enough on the corner right there here you have do to you, do you need to the, stay no, further the, we were apex in it there i think it's we the right spot for the bumps apex in here the bumps are we're like around yeah here, i think you right? gotta go a little yeah. deeper to pass yeah, the bumps you have to go okay. deep and then around the bumps because it's not really obviously visible from just looking at it from you know a uh, camera in motion but no yeah you don't really know until you go over <laughs> until you run over <laughs> and then you're like oh okay all right all right, go for it, man. Get out of your way. Because now Brian's going to say, oh, everything Claudia said, BS. <laughs> no, um, it's also got that classic Yamaha under him. I was right. just going to go back to one thing. Of so, so, quick question. Uh, you rode your Triumph. Yes. And then you rode one, or what did you ride? R1. An R1. But it's a 99, so it's all old. There's no TCS, no fuel injection. It's all new. Cool. Yeah, cool. it's, it's a raw skill. motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, man's bike. The right man's bike. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's still a sweet bike. I mean, they they really broke the mold when they made that made that one. Back to what um, Claudio was saying. Uh, one comment on the F4I slowing him down. Granted, it at your skill level, it might have been slowing you down, but. Put li Chris Lilligard on it and see what kind yeah. of lap time, see what right. turn, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that would be ridiculous. He's yeah. got so much experience that I mean, he would be running oh, significantly yeah. faster. Your words, yeah. right? I can see you were struggling to turn that bike. Right. Like I would be struggling to turn that bike as well because it's not set up for what we're trying to achieve at right. that speed now. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I hear the Daytona is a great track bike. A lot of the guys like that and run that. You know, it's cheap to rebuild. It's quick if you, yeah. once you get there. Um, so my bike, first thing, before, I talked about this a little last time, before you go to the track, especially for races, make sure you're tired. That is the most important link in your chain. All the other stuff, it doesn't matter if your tires are crap. You can have a perfect track, it's hot and sticky, it's beautiful, you got TCS on your bike, you know, you have uh, all the bells and whistles, but if your tires are no good, then your ride's no good, your race is no good. So, and like you were saying, race guys, they, they don't even let their tires get down to halfway. They're selling them before that. You can buy takeoffs and they're putting new ones on. And a lot of those guys, once you start winning races, you can get free tires or discounted tires or, oh, the various things, especially if you start putting uh, their stickers on your bike. Um, next, getting prepared for your first track day. I did not realize how many holes you had to drill in your bike in order to be fully teched. And they say you can do all the stuff at the track, Danny said that, but um, some of them are a little sketchier, like the rear nut is a little harder to drill. Uh, the front, you have to drill the front strut on the main side, you know, where the hex nut is. So you go through your aluminum, through the bolt, and then you'll wrap it, 
you'll run the safety wire through there, wrap it, and then go to another bolt, your little set bolt, you have to drill that as well. Then you will run it, twist it, run it through there, twist it again. Uh, you have to do all of your brake calipers. You, both of your front two, your rear, you gotta do all of your oil things. Uh, the oil drain nut, the top oil nut, the oil filter in which you get a clamp and you mm -hmm. run uh, the wire through or around the clamp and clamp your oil filter on. And then you have to have another hole in your block or something in order to safety wire that to. Uh, radiator cap. You have to safety wire your radiator cap. I didn't know that as well. Also, you don't want anything with glycol or oil-based in your radiator fluid. You want straight filtered water, or I hear a lot of the guys use water wetter or something like that. Um, I haven't got any of that yet, but I'm, I might for the next one. Um, so yeah, and learn, learn the safety wire. I actually got uh, a guy that's been racing for a while. He also did uh, aircraft mechanics for a while, so he was really good at safety wire. He came over, showed me how to do a few, and you know, now I got it down, I can, I can do it really well, and uh, that's important. Did you use a drill press in jigs, or did you just freehand it on the bike? No, I left everything attached to the bike and yeah. used a drill. Uh, the drill bit is actually very important. I ended up getting some cobalt industrial bits from uh, Lowe's and they worked really well. They went, whereas I was burning up like new bits like crazy, I went through at least three other bits and they were brand new bits. And then I got one of these and it did the rest of the job. You know, it did oh, several right. holes by itself. So uh, that was that was good. Uh, some of the, the bolts or the, like the back nut, like I said, that one was kind of difficult to drill because you kind of have to, have it at the right angle. I tightened it a little bit just to get the valley <coughs> or the uh, the point where I wanted it, and then pulled <coughs> through. It took, you know, at least 20 minutes of just sitting there, kept the oil in it, going through it, because that's when I was using the lesser bits. Um, but if if you had a good one, it'd probably be a lot easier. Uh, and then registering for races. I don't know if you you didn't pre-register this time, right? Oh, you did for no That's right. So if you, I think he was saying he can tell you a lot better than I can, but if you, you download forms, I uh, think you have to print them out and fax them back, right, in order to pre-register. I didn't do that. I just showed up uh, Friday morning and then I paid for my practice day, or I had a, a voucher card actually from corner work in uh, the previous year, the end of last year. Um, so I did that and I didn't even pay for my races yet. I waited because I wasn't sure which ones I wanted to do. And I wanted to kind of get out of there early so we could get home and we still didn't get home till like 11 o'clock. But uh, I did one of the earlier races instead of trying to do one of the later ones and having to stay till the very end of the day and not get home till two or three in the morning, so. What time uh, did you leave? You ended your day? But we ended up leaving around four. So I was done around three. Of course, it, everything was kind of pushed back. A lot of the race weekends, they run a little behind schedule, uh, especially in the mornings. You know, there's a lot of, usually there's a lot of dew in Texas because of the change from cold to hot. And so it's foggy or the track's wet, it's real green. So they kind of delay everything and then everything gets behind. Uh, like that first weekend we were there when we worked uh, the corner work. I was going to race that weekend, but I didn't. You know, I, I don't know if everybody knew about my accident and everything. I told most people, but uh, by the Saturday I was already dead. So I, I didn't have energy to go. I was gonna go corner work that day and then uh, race on Sunday, but I'm glad I didn't because it was cold and wet until 3.30, 4 o'clock on Sunday and people were going down like crazy. I was running and picking up bikes. There were so many that I just started collecting bikes at my turn because they were tired. <laughs> they were tired of stopping the race, bring the truck out, pick up the bike, and then so they were just me, do you want an R6 or what? <laughs> yeah. A black or a white R6? I what do you want? I have like three R6s right. here. You want one? <laughs> so, and I ended up helping them out. They ended up needing me that day, so everything worked out. Um, I really wanted to race that day, but. And it turns out that the sun did come out around 3.34, so those last couple races were really good and the track was hot and it got sticky, but, you know, better safe than sorry. Right. And, uh, yeah, so I just, I healed up Saturday 
and uh, just worked Sunday and then waited, of course, till NOLA to race. Um, and I didn't register until, so you can register whenever you can register Saturday morning, you can even register Sunday morning. I think I, I registered sometime on Saturday. And uh, don't forget about how, <laughs> how much you have to pay for. Like the first weekend I was there, I didn't realize how much all the fees were. So you had to pay the $85 for the class and you get your license that you're uh, you know, a problem of, but then you still have to pay your yearly fee, so that's another 160. And then if you wanna do two races, that's another 160. And Whoa. then if you need new tires, then, you know, I mean, it just, it keeps <laughs> adding on and on and on. So bring extra money is kind of <laughs> <laughs> the point of that. Yes. And Brian, on the registration, awesome. another reason to not pre-register is if you're new and you don't want to be at the front of the pack. Or in the middle, right, right there in that. And you just don't, and, and you'd rather be in the back like I did when I started. Yeah. Yeah. Then you register that morning because that way, if you crash that day, you're not out the money mm. that you pre-registered for the next day. Yeah. So, right. But if yeah. you do want to be at the front of the pack, then you pre-register. You got it. By order. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like fine, huh? yeah I pre-registered mostly fine. like to avoid like getting on lines the there, road, trying yeah. to just save yeah. up time. Yeah. But I didn't think of that. Yeah, well, what if I crash? <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. yeah. And another thing, glad you brought that up, uh, they don't tell you this, that it's different for the first race than it is for the second, because you, the order in which you register determines your point on the grid. Right. Now, after the first race, then people have points, and then they will mm be automatically positioned up the front all the way down until nobody else with points and then it'll go by mm. who is registered first and has no points. Your chance so. of being at the front of the pack as you start out racing is almost zero. Yeah. yeah. Because you're competing against guys that have been racing for years. Yeah, they already yeah. know how it works Just anyway. Just that your first race will be at the back. <laughs> Try not to crash. Yeah, yeah. 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 just start to Yeah. Yeah. So you don't get <laughs> Once you take that shirt off, then yeah. Yeah, a lot of those guys have been racing for ten or twenty years, yeah. and they do give discounts for once you've been with CMRA for ten years. You, your registration, I mean, your yearly fee goes down, I believe, and then maybe even your race registration fees. But also, you do, you could vouch for this: the more races you do, the cheaper they get. Yeah. So your your first is ninety, second is sixty, third is fifty, then fourth and fifth are forty. Okay. And then I don't know what they charge you for your sixth. If I that was thirty 40, or it was forty, that's the lowest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you get a little more value. Yes. You. Uh, Who told you? <laughs> <laughs> I think I ended up spending about 600 for the NOLA weekend, and that was including hotel, and of course I, I brought a few hundred extra in case I needed another tire or whatever, yeah. you know, incidentals. That's another reason to get an R3. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh -huh. I'm telling you, it's so cheap to race yeah. that thing. Yeah. Well, the good thing about my bike is a lot of times I can find good cheap parts either aftermarket or uh salvage yeah. like that radiator oh yeah i had to get i got used yeah. on ebay for like 60 bucks or something which yeah. was great and then i have like certain parts the chinese parts i buy but it's very limited like the uh the pegs the uh, the lever guards things like that the uh, the spool, the swing arm spools. So those things I'll order from China. But the the only thing that I have from China that is of any like functioning capability is I bought an extra fuel pump for 20 bucks. But that was only because mine was questionable. And I, I'm sure that that one would work for at least a day if I needed it as a backup. I had to switch yeah. it out real quick or something. So mm. uh, things like that. Uh, things of more importance than, yeah, it would be more well, Some things aren't them. available anymore. I've been really shocked. I'm trying to figure out should I get a newer bike? Because on my bike, a lot of parts are no longer being made by the manufacturer. What bike? Uh, I have a Suzuki SV650, and I also have an old Honda F3. The F3, mm. I can't get parts to save my life, like Claudio was talking about uh, rear sets for it. I can't find anywhere on the planet to get those anymore. 
other than salvage parts of it. It is, but it's surprising what you can't get at this point. What year is it? Well, it's a it's a 2004, so it's all it's a little over 15 years old, and I'm really surprised how many parts I actually can't get now. It's like, it's like wow, time's marching on, but in some cases, uh, Chinese parts are the only ones like uh, fuel pet cock and some of those types of items. And they're not good parts, but they're also the only parts you can get. Yeah. The well, yeah, obviously, if you don't have yeah. a choice. Have you yeah. tried eBay? Like, oh, yeah, I've looked for parts, and... but like old petcocks, for examples, where the O-rings are dying, the rubber has a shelf life. Yeah. And, yeah, you can buy an original OEM one if you can find one, but it's probably not long for this world. Um, so, I mean, so. that old, and it's still yeah, this that's... century. Yeah. I thought it was, you know, like... Well, my SV is really surprising me on a few points at this point. So I'm thinking, because mm. I, I just had to rebuild it after crashing. I'm like, really? You can't get fairings for this anymore? This is I will try. most popular, but. Um, um, shout out to the guy from Houston <laughs> Motorcycle Salvage, but he's got a yeah. lot of parts over there, especially if you need bolts or whatever. Yeah. I would call him and see he might yeah. have some old fairings or something like yeah. that yeah i managed to get most of them but i contacted like our armor bodies they're like oh we haven't done any of those in a while they're not available so what about shark skins they yeah they get yeah air tech doesn't have anything i was really so I, I did find some fairings but i really had to kind of shop around for a while to try to yeah it's still it two more weeks out harder. before they do more but that's one thing that concerns me about my bike but i'm just gonna Ride it as long as I can. I don't yeah, exactly. have 20 grand to go buy a new R1M and exactly. know, use it as a track bike. So. <laughs> you don't need 20 grand, you can get an R3 for 3 grand. Oh, right? well, yeah. 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 You but he wants an R1M. I know. He yeah. Watch it. Yeah. Watch Who doesn't, it. right? You get passed by R3s when you're racing, right? So yep. my, my philosophy is until I'm fast enough, I'm well. for you to actually place. <laughs> yeah. so I'm not going to mess with the BMW. I didn't get past oh, yeah. my R threes. <laughs> we'll work with Coach Chris, and then we'll talk. Yeah. They will see. We'll talk again yeah. after that. See Chris out there but lapping the guys on the MSR. The yeah, he, I don't think he could lap me. MSR is my home yeah. track. That's the one that I can't wait till June to actually. Because the next next track, I'm not going to really be competitive either. Because how I've never been there. I'm going to have yeah. to practice all day Friday, <laughs> learn as much as I can. And like with Nola, I got down to two tens by the end of my first day, the, the last session on Friday. Right. And then the first race, it was amazing, like seconds. I dropped two seconds in each race. Uh, I did uh, 208.4 my first race, and the 206.7 in the second. And in the first race, um, I had a great launch. There was 18 guys. I was at the back, of course. Launch great, was right on the pack. I mean, I was all the way on the gas tank, dragging feet. I was right on their butts. And like uh, Claudio said, I kind of let off early on turn one because I don't want to push it too hard and I don't want to be in there. I mean, I was, I was still with them, but I, uh, I, I let off a little, but not enough. I came out a little wide, hit the, uh, the candy stripes on the far side of the turn, going back to turn two, cut back left, and I got ahead of a couple people, but then I overcooked it um, for turn three because it's a nice hairpin. Luckily, yeah. there's a runoff there. Um, so I swung out wide, I looked over, let them go, and then got back behind them. And then I got stuck behind them for a few laps, but I was like, it doesn't matter. I'm, uh, I'm just trying to stay up, up and right. I like to yeah. pass a couple people. But So we'll see how it goes. And then a few laps later, uh, I got around both of them. Uh, I was able to put a gap on uh, then a little bit, a few seconds, one of the guys went down, so I ended up uh, 15th out of 18th. I don't know what their point uh, schedule is, like if 15th gets a point or if it yeah, stops at 10th. I think it goes all the way to 20. So, okay, okay, cool. So if I got points, I'm, I'm yeah. happy. You're not I'd starting like to, from the back anymore. Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. <laughs> I'd like to get within the top Pretty 10 generous. so I can go expert next year if I want. You just have to be in the top 10 in one of the classes. Uh, in championship points, you know, end of the year points to well, move they, up they to expert. They changed it now, it's self-promotion. You, you basically promote yourself. It used to be oh, where you, they would Oh, take really? You, you can say I'm would, ready to expert? You can yeah. now say I'm ready and no questions asked. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. I started doing that this year. 
Okay. Mm. So cool. make, make it your goal at Halleck not to crash. Yeah. 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 No. Don't, don't, be, don't be the guy that ends up in the turtle pond. <laughs> you should crap. totally do I didn't that. I even know there was a turtle pond, but I'll watch out for that. Yeah. And like Nola, it's just like Houston, man. It's so flat, and it's you know nine yeah. below, nine feet below sea level there. So I mean, you're at turn one, and you can't see where any of the future turns are. All you can see is the next turn ahead of you. So. You got to go and then learn one turn at a time, go around it a bunch of times, and then you start to get a feel for it. Then you can speed up a little bit and, uh, like, yeah, no yeah, I don't know around the track at all. No, no I don't, I yeah, don't know what's nothing. outside it's of just... turn five, but there is so much garbage. It's like turn five past mm -hmm. where the car is on the other side, way back there. Mm -hmm. It's all candy striped. It looks like the end of a runway or something there. Like it used to be an airstrip. And there's there so much garbage there. out there. It just yeah. blows my mind. <laughs> it's like, dude, they never I it did not anything. notice that. Um, but back to this. Uh, the turns, the the curves on here, I don't know, you can't, the bumps, I mean, I don't yeah. know if you could really see them. I don't know if this is them right here or if that... It's the round there. Yeah. That if we hit them going here, it might be these right here. Because yeah, I think when I missed them, I came out here and then I cut across yeah. like kind of middle, a couple feet over from the apex, you know? Yeah. And and that's how I missed them. I'm pretty sure I hit them this time, but it was, it was pretty daunting the first few sessions also my suspension wasn't set up right i don't know if it was just was it set up at all <laughs> i mean having no point well it, of it had been but it was great at msr it felt good uh, yeah. i was starting to really speed up by the end of the mock race you know the last one i turned a pretty decent lap but then i got it to nola it was just it was gooey i mean it was there was nothing it was just like straight to the bottom and i was bouncing all over the place it I felt like something was loose or what, so I did a couple <laughs> sessions and I came back and uh, I went and talked to Danny Dominguez and he was like, oh yeah, this is this is horrible. My compression was <laughs> way too quick. So he adjusted it and then the third session or so I went out, it was yeah, it was great. And plus it had started coming around, it was hotter and tires were stickier and I was learning yeah. the track. So at that point, then I was like, okay, Nola's not that bad. Um, a six and seven are the other two turns that have the bump in them. So if you're coming in, um, you'll apex five, you'll go out wide, and then you'll go a lot deeper than you think because it's a late apex on that turn. And uh, as soon as you go in to hit that apex, most of the riders I talked to, the faster racers were just like, they just go through them. They, uh, they go, they aim for the apexes and they just go straight through them. You're gonna hit one in six and then another one in seven. You have to be kind of careful on seven because when you're coming out, you're accelerating. And most of the time, especially earlier in the days, uh, that first day and earlier Sunday, I was waiting until I went over the bump to get back on the gas because I didn't want to be in. And then you're accelerating to well over 100 because there's a short straightaway there. So you could get on the gas pretty hard, but you know, if you bump and you're ass, you're, rear end slides out, then yeah, we don't want that. So I right, just took you checked in the 15th place, you said we're 15th? Yeah. You get 24 points. Wow. Damn. Wow, so payday. Started, first place gets 45 points. Okay. And it just goes wow. down all the wow. way to 38th place, you get one point. Oh, wow. wow. So Is that point? Because wow. I, I looked like a week ago, I didn't see any results on there really posted. Yep, this is from oh, the 2019 manual. Yeah. Okay. And that's it, for Supermodic Novice, like so... It took like a week to... Yeah, this yeah, is for yeah. sprints. Yeah. Endurance yeah. is different. Yeah, yeah. For sprints. Huh? So I'm going to continue hmm. Superbike Novice, and then maybe... Um, I just turned 40 last month, so I might then, start doing... Uh, then promote, promote yourself. Races. Promote yourself. <laughs> 40. Yeah, I hear that's a gentleman's race, so yeah. they're, they're fast, but they're that's very fun. careful about their passing, and they're, you know... Have to go to work on Respectful. <laughs> I didn't do that one because I think it was back-to-back -back with the Prof Nov. It might have been. Yeah, right I said I'm not doing back-to-back -back races. And then you don't, of course, you don't get any... Uh, points for the Prognov right. races. In that one, um, I got a bad launch. There was only seven of us. Right. So I was at the back and I didn't get around Claudio until right before this pretty much. Um, right. 
Because I, this was another thing I was going to talk about. So whenever those lights go on, when all three lights are on, you better be at max revs. Because if you're at half revs or something, you're going to launch like crap. And you're going to be like, God dang it, waiting, you know, uh, one guy is taking off and everybody else is, is Yeah, go about that when I saw this, these guys like wheeling past me. And I'm like, whoa, dude. Yeah. 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 One of the guys had been there before and he was on an R6 and he had started running 159s. So, and he started back uh, position five or something. He went past everybody. Mm. He, his fastest lap I checked that race was two minutes something, two, point, two minute point five, but that's, that's still moving pretty well on an R6. Yeah. There was a guy, my, my friend Marcelo told me, he was out there with you that weekend. That was a problem not, but he was coming from another club and he was an expert in his other club. So he was just killing everybody as a problem not, even the experts, he was passing the experts. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in CMRA, when you start, you have yeah. a problem not. You still start at the ball. Yeah. So I don't know if he was maybe that same kid, but. Was, but was it a young, it wasn't a young black kid, was it? Because that's the guy I was talking about that won the problem of race. Um, could be, I don't know. But Marcello was just telling me that he was blown away by how fast his problem not passed him. And then he looked him up and he was a champion. And, yeah, yeah I, I do remember having at least one or two guys with problem not shirts going by. It's like, okay, this guy's not an novice. Heck no. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, that's a skill I've never even explored is the start. I mean, you see uh, MotoGP guys doing yeah. practice starts on the track. I've never in my life tried to practice start. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> the worst for me too. You know? I used to practice it. I used to practice it. By the way behind me. Yeah. yeah. I stalled the bike, yeah, because I've never done a start before. Yeah. Yeah, that's scary. That's the most important thing, especially if you got a bunch of people behind you. Just don't stall. Don't worry about no. launching perfect. Just don't like, stall. I sort of Control your wheelie. So yeah. you just like pin it to the max and like hold it to the max torque RPM and then just. Oh, no, just no, no. No. <laughs> no, I have my. It's a semi racing clutch on mine, so it's got like 400 foot pounds of pressure or inch pounds. I can't remember what it is. No, it's foot pounds, I think, yeah. um, on it. So it'll engage hard. So I only go like that first race when I launch. Well, see, my tack doesn't even work, so I just guess. I mean, it's probably, <laughs> it's probably around 8,000 RPMs, I'm guessing, 7, When, eight, when do you shift? You just wait for the rev limiter. I, just, I know the bike so well. I hear it. I can tell when I'm getting. And I hit the rev limiter a couple of times, but it's it's pretty rare that I actually catch it. I need to. I do need to get a new cluster. Uh, That's funny. That was nice part. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm definitely not like those crazy guys. They'll just peg it at eleven thousand and and work it with the clutch. Um, my bike loves, and I guess all R ones love to wheelie in first gear, so. I used to practice at uh, red lights a lot when I drove on the street. I would, you know, wait until it would turn green and just uh, yeah, dude. try to ride a small wheelie out. But um, don't do I that do anymore. That. No, I don't do that anymore. Control. This is a straight track bike, and uh, I didn't. You can practice at the races. They do have a uh, a launch setup. So at the end, once they throw the checkered flag of one yeah. of your sessions, then you can stop and wait. I mean, make sure that. You're clear before you pull over and stop. You know, look behind you, throw your hand up, let everybody know you're stopping, and right. and pull over, and then wait if anybody's still coming, let them go by if they're not doing a stop, and then you do your practice. I didn't really like the practice start area for for Nola, but I mean it was okay, it worked. So question: yeah. If guys were are used to doing what in a street they call it doing digs, mm -hmm. which is you know, going from a dig, from going a from a dig, right, from a stop doing a dig. Is that the same principle as a start at a race? Is that the same exact technique? Okay, what's yeah. different dig? I have no first It's just from a dead stop racing each other. So yeah. It's like, okay. Yeah, it's it's the same. You wanna you wanna be on the the res as much as possible, as much as it can take without wheeling. Obviously, a small wheelie is okay, but if you wheelie, you're um, losing acceleration speed. You're going up instead of forward, and so yeah. you're losing your forward momentum. Um, but a little, a couple inches off the ground is not a big deal because when you shift, it's going to come down anyway. Um, but yeah, as soon as that light goes, that third light is on, you want to be at max rev. So you should really start revving at the first light and have it where you want it. You know, have your hands on your clutch, you know, be down, ready to go. 
you know, if you want to launch fast, if you want to wait for the end, you know, like Claudia, just kind of yeah. chill, hang out. I gotta go. <laughs> Watch yeah. the fun, you know. Yeah. Best thing yeah. in the house. <laughs> yeah. When you heard all those revs going, didn't your adrenaline get pumping? Yeah. It does, but then yeah. at the same time, I'm like, these kids are nuts. Let's He's like, I'm not let them go ahead, yeah. you know. Just go. I'll, 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 I'll do it. I'll, I'll come in there. Yeah. That, that's when I realized, like the first my first race, and all the engines started to go. I thought, okay, this is happening. This is happening right? <laughs> yeah. And everybody takes off. We wither without you. Yeah, yeah it is a an instant adrenaline rush, and um, with Superbike novice, I was like, I was, I'm not trying to get up there with any of those guys. The fact that I passed a couple people, I was happy. You know. <laughs> That was enough. Yeah, you didn't crash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was the main point. Obviously, first goal always keep the rubber side down. Yeah. Uh, the second one, I did pretty well. I got up into fourth, and then I kind of hung out there. I was following this one guy, um, Joel, I think Joel Linker. Joel Linker. Yeah. yeah. On that photo I had from Corner Worker, uh, Corner Working, he was the one with his wife, like on the inside of Keyhole. It was Joel. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He was working the same weekend. Yeah, I did see him there. Okay. Yeah. So I was pretty much following him. It was uh, second place, third place, and then me. And we, pretty much the whole, the last five laps of the race, we were all together. And I was riding on his uh, butt. But I didn't really want to push it. Like, I felt in some places I was faster and I could get up on him. But I felt like I was going fast enough and I just wanted to finish. So. Yeah. I, I just stood a few feet back from him and kept a quick pace, and then we finished. It was a lot of fun. Then we got back to the truck and loaded everything up, trying to get out of there uh, at a reasonable time. It's a long drive, like six hours or more from NOLA. Yeah. I don't know how it's even worse. That's a good eight hour drive. Yeah, I definitely would not head straight back after days. racing all day. <laughs> well, luckily I wasn't driving, so the guy I was riding with, he did the uh, endurance race. He had ridden the previous day, and then Sunday he didn't ride at all, so mm. that was great. I yeah. could just chill and he could drive back. And that's another thing, if you can find somebody to oh, yeah. carpool with, yep. like there's a CMRA forum, you can get on there, you can post and say, hey, I'm going to Hallett from Houston, anybody want to link up? And because that's kind of what yeah. we did. That's how, where I met him, and then just got his number, and we split the cost, split the gas, and uh, whatever. So, oh yeah, another thing is uh, back to paying. When after you do your class, if you're gonna corner work the next day, go pay your yearly registration fee with CMRA before you go corner work. Because if you don't pay that first, then you won't get credit for your CMRA qualifications. That girl, the same girl he was talking about, she did what I'm talking about. She went corner work, she didn't pay that mm -hmm. Friday night, and she didn't get credit for that day. So she had to take the $80 cash or whatever. Yeah. And then she had to do two more days. So yeah, make sure they don't tell you all these things. I mean, they say all the rules are in the rule book. I haven't read it all <laughs> yet. I read a bit of it. Um, and also there's that handbook that they give you during the schooling, but it, that doesn't have everything in it as well. So ask a lot of questions. Um, when you corner work, you don't have to pay the parking fee when you yep. come to the gate. Yeah, just tell them when you go in. I got charged, I didn't know about go. that, and then I, you know, threw away the, the little receipt or whatever. Oh, no, so you didn't get reimbursed. <laughs> so yeah, so just tell them. Gonna be carrying tell them at the gate and show up at the track. It's like, oh. Well, no, I paid a credit card. Oh, I, I threw away the, the band, the armband. Because uh, they said, well, if you return the, the, the armband, it proves that you paid for it, and then they reimburse. I had already yeah. oh. done it. Yeah. Like 20 bucks for the weekend or something like that. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, yeah, they told me, they, they started to ask me for money. I was like, I'm corner working there. Oh, okay, just sign this. So, yeah. yeah. What is corner working? <laughs> Flagging, yeah, flagging or picking up the bikes. Oh, okay, so you're participating yeah. with the track. Uh, okay. Operations, okay. So yeah. Yeah, they have a bike school. You know, it's required for you to get your license. They want you to go out there and hand corner work. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you either have to flag or handle. If you're a handler, you have to <clears> be able to run, pick up a 350 pound bike. Uh, flagging, you just sit there and you pull the red, the yellow, the green. 
they have the meatball flag, the rain flag. And they explain all this. You get there at 6.30, 6.45 in the morning, yeah. dark and early. Right. Also, you're gonna get papers whenever you complete everything, your classes, uh, you have to keep track of the two corner days you work. You have to keep track of the two races, two race days that you do multiple races and that uh, you don't crash. So this has to be signed at the end of each day. Don't forget about that. Save that paper, take it to the appropriate person, whoever's running corner working that day. Or uh, like for me on race day, I believe it was the, the outrider Ryan that signed my paper for uh, two races, no crashes. Uh, so yeah, keep track of that, make sure you get that done. Uh, tech, you'll have to go to tech if you're practicing on Friday, you'll have to get a tech that day. If you're not running till Sunday, I don't think you have to get a tech till Sunday. Uh, they're gonna look at everything. You're gonna have to take your belly pan off, take it to them. Some people like put it on the back of their seat, flip it over so it sits there. Mm -hmm. I saw some people riding, kind of holding it on the gas tank. Uh, some other people, you know, you bring it over in two trips, take it on your I bicycle, have somebody else. Everest. Mm -hmm. Oh, he didn't? Okay. Yeah. So, so I guess that being a little leech. should bring it? Lean. I didn't because I didn't have a way to bring. So yeah. They had a new tech remember. guy now because yeah. the one from last year left. And the older guy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. uh, they have a new younger guy that was doing it now. DJ or something like that? DJ. Yeah. I don't remember his name, but he was he was being a little lenient. They'll be cool with you, especially if you're just getting started. You know, they want you to be able to make it. They want you to be able to race, and they're going to help you. You know, just ask questions, tell them what you need or what you don't know or whatever. That was what I was about to say earlier. Ask a lot of questions. Uh, I I didn't know a lot of this stuff, so a lot of this stuff I found out through trial and error. I talked to Danny a lot. Uh, you can find other racers. Uh, people that have been racing for years that are above you, you can ask them questions. Um, oh, I emailed, what is it, admin and CMRA a lot. Yeah, there's a phone number, a you can call and ask them, yeah. and, and the girl who answers, if she doesn't know, she'll give you the number, somebody who knows, or yeah. she'll have somebody get back to you. And and, aren't they revamping the website to make it more friendly? That's what I heard, yeah, because since I couldn't find information on their website, kept like just emailing them and then eventually one of them said yeah, yeah we know that information is somewhere there it just is yeah. not you cannot get to it we know of it we are revamping it but because i mean for a season track day rider like you and as hard as it was for you to get simple questions answered yeah they're yeah. going to turn away a lot of potential racers yeah yeah if they can't get the in that information quickly exactly yeah you were diligent and you stuck with it, but at some point anybody right. else would have said, screw this. Yeah, yeah. and I'm this the too kind of person that, I mean, I can go into a website and dig into it and find stuff, yeah. right? But because I work with that, this kind of stuff, yeah. a lot of writers, they're like, I don't do, don't do comp this computer yeah. stuff. I've given them that feedback. Well, when it gets like, uh, you mentioned how it may run behind in schedule, like on the days like on Saturday, yeah, like on Friday, most of the day, a lot of transponders, including mine, were not working. Mm -hmm. On Saturday, we were supposed to have one free practice in the morning before the races, and the transponders were still not working. So they gave us one more free practice so that they could adjust their system and stuff yeah. to make sure that our bikes were showing up on their system. Yeah. And then later in the day, uh, they, they apologized, and apparently it was like the first time doing the work that this lady was there, and she didn't know how to do something so the numbers and registration didn't go through the system properly mm -hmm. so a lot of people are like freaking out because like in my case like you know jason pointed out i need to show up on the list otherwise it counts yeah. as like i didn't yeah. i didn't right. start the race when i was watching you from right. the live timings and you never showed up on the grid yeah exactly now anytime yeah. there's a race you go to oh, yeah. live timings.com right or race timings i guess the last thing is be safe um <laughs> in order to win a race or even to place in a race you have to finish the race that is the most important thing it is true and be safe protect your bike and another go even one step further than that from my first race weekend at msrh when it was raining to <laughs> place in a race or to win a race you have to be able to start the race so you have to finish the warm-up lap without wrecking which several people did that day <laughs> so they didn't even get back to the grid mm -hmm. 
Jeez. they were not at full speed and they wrecked. They cracked up their bike. They got a little hurt. So, mm. uh, yeah, it's it's good. Like I want to be fast. I want to be able to compete with the fast guys. But if your rubber's in the air, you're not going to compete with anybody. <laughs> Yeah, Keep the rubber nice. side down. So yeah. uh, that's all I gotta say. Unless anybody has any more questions, so I'm gonna show you guys a start. A, sure. a guy that tried to use um, launch control. I was just about to ask that. I was yeah. just about to ask. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. When you buy your next bike, is that gonna be one of those things that you have to have on your next bike? Is it, does it have to have? I've like, never launch used it control, before. Cornering ABS. Some of the guys do use it. I guess. I don't know if the camera can still see me, but some of the guys do use launch control. I've heard of some people having trouble with it. Like there was one guy went in uh, Ride Smart, the mock race. He ended up, I don't know if this was the first time he used his launch control or what, but of course he had it pegged. He dropped the clutch and the bike went flying, left him on his ass. I mean, it went, stood up and just took off. And you know, he's left sitting there. Um, so, <laughs> that would suck. <laughs> yeah. So if you are going to use launch control, if you do want it, make sure you practice it <laughs> first yeah, it works, right? before you get it to the yeah. track and, and you know, screw up your brand new bike yeah. on launch control. Oh, okay. But I, I'm not so concerned about that because I'm used to the old. Old school. Yeah, the old bikes, old clutch and everything. Okay. Here's somebody with it. Wow, I mean, there's all kinds of different bikes there. Whoa! Oh, oh my gosh! Oh. <laughs> you, you the the and that's why you don't rev into the red line. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. yeah. So you hit the guy in front of him. You're yeah. all problem on Yeah. Oh, boom! Oh, oh man, it landed yeah. on the rear of his bike. Oh my god. So that's another reason not to be out front. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One more time for the cheap seats. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Right? Wow! Whoa. It was an R1 or something. I think. Oh wow! Yeah, it is. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. I don't know how that works. So when you engage launch control and you're ready to launch, are you just holding half yeah. throttle? So, or are you so my bike throttle? has it. I, I played with, with uh, you have a, a time period. You can do three launches within like 20 minutes. And after that, it will shut down because of the clutch. But basically, there's a little mode. And my BMW and the R1 is probably different. There's a combination of things that you, you click. Mm -hmm. And it puts it in launch mm -hmm. control mode. And then you just pin it wide open and it'll automatically keep the wheel down for you mm -hmm. all the way up until like second gear. At least it's supposed to. So yeah. it's supposed to when it's when it's in launch control mode. Yeah. He might not have he thought engaged. it was in launch control yeah. but it wasn't. Yeah. So he had it pinned mm -hmm. like yeah. it supposed to do and you let go of the clutch and then it keeps the wheel down. Mm, yeah. It's exactly the same. So Simple I saw physics. BMW's in Yamaha, so that's oh, exactly cool. the same yeah. thing with Yamaha. So that's why I was curious about when you go to your next bike, because we talk about those things at the dealership, but never with this behind it. Never. Now when I go and talk about those features, I'd be like, this is the difference. And it's going to take a diff totally different amount of time if you go to the track. A lot of my guys that buy bikes aren't going to the track. But they want to be able to look like they're fast, they're fucking yeah. on the street. So that's why last time I was here, I was having all that conversation because I was like, my mind was reworking itself to get away from street mentality to thinking about track track application. And so that's why I wanted to know yeah. and why I wanted to know everybody's bike so that I can understand why you guys are saying this is what's happening, this is what's happening. Because in my world, I'm thinking like one of the fucking bikes that are riding it for you, you know, with cornering ABS. Yeah. With, Dude, don't tell them shit, like, just yeah. let them go out and wreck the bike, because the rest of us have yeah. some shit. Order some steering. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna I, I want to be able to buy a good, you know, second-hand Ducati. Yeah. Or, 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 what side do you think the crash on? If, if you're <laughs> if you're <laughs> if you're <laughs> if you're if you're